So let's go over what to do when your black and white op art background is done and your painted paper. We're going to put these two together to make one artwork. We're going to cut out part of our painted paper and glue it onto our black and white optical illusion. So think about the areas of your optical illusion that you want to show. There may be something special in yours, like maybe the center that you really want to stay visible. Maybe it's the corner. It just depends on your design. For mine, I want my painted paper to be kind of in the middle here as a drippy line shape. I don't want to cover this corner or this corner because that's showing the depth in my illusion. So I don't want to cover that. When you're thinking about what areas to cut out of your painted paper, Think about where it will be when you glue it down to your black and white background. So on the back of your painted paper, we're going to draw the shape that we want to cut out. So I'm gonna kind of line this up here and just make a little mark here. So that's about where I want it to start. And we're going to imagine drawing my line this way. We don't want to draw on top of our painted side because then if we need to erase, we could ruin the paint. So it's better to draw on the back side, but you have to imagine it in reverse because you're going to be gluing this down. So I'm drawing a wavy line across my paper. This is going to be the top of my shape. So I'm going to draw some drippy line shapes for mine, inspired by the artist Jen Stark. Whatever you're drawing, you're going to have to cut out. So keep that in mind if you're cutting anything that's really small that could be hard to cut on. So I'm trying to keep my drippy line shape pretty big so that it's easier for me to cut. And I'm using some different lengths and sizes to show variety. Once you're happy with your shape, then you can go ahead and cut it out from your painted paper. Remember to cut carefully around all of the details that you drew. Once you have cut out your shape, then we're going to glue it onto our background. You can also cut out more than one shape from your painted paper. Like I might want to put another shape near the top or the bottom. So I'm going to save my pieces just in case. So on the back of my cutout piece, I'm going to use a glue stick and add some glue all over the back. Make sure you get all of the edges so that it stays in place. Then when you're gluing down your piece, make sure that it lines up right on the edge of the paper. If it doesn't, you could end up with not enough space and your paper might not reach the other side. Once you feel like it's in the right spot, then you can turn over your paper and give it a rub to make sure that it stays in place. If you have any pieces that are coming up, make sure you add some glue underneath so that those don't come up. Now I decided that I wanted to add a shape at the bottom of mine too. So I'm using the bottom of my painted paper and I'm going to cut out a shape that kind of looks like a puddle, which will give the look like the drippy line shape that I have on there is dripping into a puddle. So now I can glue this on the bottom edge of my paper. I'm also going to cut out a shape that will be on the top of my paper. Remember, you need at least one shape that is cut out from your painted paper, but you can also do more than one, like I am doing three. I flip this over, I can see that there's a little extra piece of the painted paper sticking out and I'm just gonna cut that off. So make sure that you don't have extra pieces hanging off. The next step we're going to do is give our painted paper shapes an outline with a Sharpie. So I'm going around the edge of the painted paper and I'm drawing right on top of the painted paper part and giving this shape an outline. I'm going to do that to all of mine. Then we're going to add some shading around the edges of our painted paper shapes. And this is going to give the illusion that the painted paper shapes are popping off of the page so that they look a little bit three-dimensional. 
So I'm going to go around the entire edge of this drippy line shape and the edges on my top and bottom shapes. Anywhere where your painted paper meets the black and white background, you should have an outline. I don't need to outline the top edges or the sides because there's no black and white background here or here because it's the end of the paper. After the edge of each painted paper shape is outlined with Sharpie, then we're going to use a black colored pencil to add some shading around the shapes. So for the shading, we're going to work on coloring really dark at the edge of the shape and then gradually getting lighter. So we're working on creating different values. Remember that you can press down hard to create a dark value, a medium amount of pressure to create a medium value, and then a very light amount of pressure to get a light value. So when you're looking where to add shading, we're going to look at the edge of the painted paper shapes and where there's a white section. So right here, there's a white section next to it is black. If I add shading on the edge where there's black, it wouldn't really show up because it's already colored in black. Anywhere where the painted paper meets a white section. I don't need to fill up the entire area of this white shape, but it should be dark right at the edge of the painted paper and then gradually get lighter. It doesn't need to come out too far, just about half an inch or so. This is going to make the painted paper look like it's popping off of the page because it will look like there's a shadow around it. And I'm following the shape of the painted paper when I'm doing this. Mine here goes at a curve, so my shading is going to go a little bit at a curve. It depends on the shape of your painted paper. If it was a circle, then your shading should go around in a circular shape. The darkest part should almost be as dark as the Sharpie. Remember that you don't need to shade on top of a black area because it won't really show up. Just along the white spaces. So I'm going to add shading all along here where there are white shapes. And then along this edge here, around the drippy line shape and at the bottom. Now this shape was pretty easy to do because it was just a slight curve. But if you have something that's more detailed, like my drippy line shape, you're going to look at where those white spaces are again and create the dark value in the shape of your painted paper. I went around this curve here and then I'm going to make the middle area a lighter value. So again, right here, I'm gonna go around this curve, making my dark value, and then shade in the middle with a medium value and get to a light value. Once you think you're done adding shading around your painted paper shapes, you should go around the edges and make sure that you have shading in every place where your painted paper meets a white area of your black and white background. So like right here on this blue drip shape, I forgot to do shading right here on this white space. It's easy to forget some parts, especially when your shape is pretty detailed. So it's just good to double check that you did every spot. Because we're shading with colored pencil, you can erase a little bit if you think that you added a little bit too much or you don't like the way that the shading is coming out. And then you can try again. Remember that we want it to be a gradual fade from dark to medium to light. I hope you had fun working on your Jen Stark inspired optical illusion. I can't wait to see how yours turns out.